So now that we saw a macro that lets us exchange the values of cell A1 and, and cell B1, I thought it would be interesting to show you how to write a macro to exchange the values of any two cells, which would be a lot more useful. So um, I've written two versions here. The first one is simple and only uses basic ideas that we've pretty much developed. The other one is much more complicated, but it's kind of fun to see how it works. So let's start with the simple one, and first I'll show you what it does. Let's just run it. So I put a button here for it. And um, let's say I want to exchange this cell and this cell. So this cell is in row 5, column 1. So I'll put the row number is 5, and the column number is 1. Okay, now it's asking me about the second cell. That's in row 8, column 2. So I'll put 8. And I'm going to put a 2. And now let's notice there's a 12 here and a 5 here. And now they've been exchanged. So let's look at the code. Um, so what I did, I set up variables for the rows and columns of each um, of the cells. So I've got four of those. Then I've got a variable temp, like I did before, to hold the actual value. And that's a variant because I can't predict what kind of value it'll be. And um, well, these I should have taken out there for the more complicated version. But let, so let's just see what happens. I'm using an input box to ask the user for input. And that's something that's built in. So I'm going to say, OK, enter the row number of the first cell. That was a prompt I had. And it goes through those, getting the row and column numbers. And then here's our exchange, like we did before. OK, so far, so good. But it's a little annoying to have to type in the row number and the column number. It might actually almost be easier just to copy and write down and remember what the values are while I'm exchanging them. So here's a more complex version. Now what this one does, it actually lets you click on the cell that you want to exchange the first cell and then the second cell. But um, that's, that's a more complicated operation, and we can't just do it with uh, in the simple way we did before. So let's take a look here. First of all, because I'm going to be choosing a cell by clicking on it, I need a type that applies to cells, and that would be a range. So I'm using the range type, and um, <coughs> excuse me. These are designated by numbers in VBA, but in order to have something more readable, I set up a constant and I wrote the name, I gave it the name range type. So instead of writing the number 8, which is the number for the range type, I'll use that constant instead. I'm going to have two cells and they're of type range. Um, I'm using temp, same reason as before. And now the prompts that I'm going to use, I decided to make those into variables um, instead of using explicit strings, just to show you what can be done. So um, for my first input box, I'm going to use the prompt select the first cell. And I'm going to give it a title as well, the title being get cell. Now, the other complication is that I can't use the VBA input box for this but I can use the one that comes with Excel itself. So this is one of the examples where Excel itself and VBA are a little bit different. Now in order to get the input box for Excel itself, I write application.inputbox. And that tells VBA to use the one from the application, which is Excel and not its own input box. And the other thing I've done is I've given um, the parameters, the things, I, the information I want to pass to this input cell, instead of just writing it in here like I did with my simpler version, I'm saying what the name of each parameter is. And this, again, helps things to be more readable. So I'm saying the prompt is going to be the string I'm calling ask for cell 1. The title is going to be the string I'm calling ask title. And um, the type of the thing I'm looking for is the range type. The other thing I've done is, because this would be a really long line if I wrote it all out, I've used the line continuation character here. So in order to break up a long line, if you use a space and an underscore, you can then continue on to the next line physically while still having the same line logically. And that's what I've done here. 
So I have actually these four lines are all logically part of the same line. All right. So I do that, and that gives me my first cell. Uh, then I change it to a new prompt. It's going to be select the second cell. And I'll once again do my uh, function call. I also have to use the keyword set uh, here. It's one of those little peculiarities of Excel that you just have to learn about when you're learning to program. Um, because I'm using the application input box, um, I'm using set. Okay, and I get my second cell. And then down here we have our familiar code, um, saving the value of the second cell, setting it to the, the second cell to the value of the first cell, and then setting the first cell. Okay, and let's just see it in action. So um, I'll go back to my Excel page here and run this guy. So select the first cell, and here's the cool thing. I can just click it. Okay, and you see the absolute name of that cell has appeared here. And now select the second cell. So, oh, let's pick this one. And here's its name. And I'll push OK. And they exchanged.